day. Welcome to EDMS, where engineering drawing is made clear, structured, and easy to master. In today's lesson, we're going to have an overlook of your EGD paper 2, what you can expect in the exam. So hopefully you know that you are writing paper 2 on the 18th of November at 2 o'clock midday. So please make sure that you are on time. The exam consists of a 3-hour paper with 200 marks and requires all questions to be answered to the best of your ability. The paper includes four questions with specific mark allocations based on a drawing and understanding of principles, emphasizing neatness and the correct use of instruments. Drawings must be done with pencils and instruments with a suggested time allocation of approximately 45 minutes per question to ensure effective time management. But this is not to say that you must spend 45 minutes on question 1. Paper 2 is your mechanical paper. And things that you can expect, mechanical analytic, a mechanism, a cam, isometrical drawing, and a mechanical assembly. Remember that paper 2 is in third orthographic projection. So let's have a look at that. Remember that your first paper was in first orthographic projection. But your second paper is in third angle. We are going to use this model as our example. The one thing that you need to know when it comes to third orthographic projection is that everything is on its place. If you remember that rule, you will succeed. Everything is on its place. What does that mean? Top is at the top. Right is at the right. Left is on the left. And obviously, when you needed to do a bottom, the bottom will be at the bottom. But we don't do bottoms. So... In first orthographic angle, it is quite the opposite. Top will be down here, bottom will be at the top, left will be on the right, and the right view will be on the left side. But third orthographic angle, everything is on its place. And this you should know by now, because this you have learned in grade 10, you've implemented in grade 10, and 11, and in 12. You can't get confused with this, guys. If you're going to get confused and you're going to switch the views, there will be a penalty of minus 2. So just be aware of that. So top view will be at the top. Left view will be drawn on the left. Right view will be drawn on the right. And the front view will be in the middle. You will use a 45 degree line to project widths over to the other view. Now let's look at a mechanical analytic example. This was the November 2023 paper. And we are going to explain to you what you are looking at here. Because this is what you can expect coming the 18th of November. First, on the left, you're going to get information regarding a mechanical drawing. Then on the right, you're going to get the question with some given and instructions. And then you're going to get, below that, you're going to get an answering table where you'll need to write in your answers in capital letters. Remember, when we do the analytical, we write in capital letters. So most of the questions is going to be based on the drawings over here. And if I can give you a tip, you will need to know your sections. Because they are most likely going to ask you a few sections that you need to identify. So make sure that you know your sections. That's my first tip. All the type of sections. Here's a table with all the sections that you need to know. An aligned section. A removed section. A sectional view. A revolved section partial section and a half section just take note that this is the correct way to indicate a half section and not like this so you can take a screenshot here to study these sections you're also going to get information regarding the drawing about who've drawn it, who've checked it, who've approved it, file name. Then also a machining symbol. You can either get a machining symbol or you can get a welding symbol. So this is my second tip. You need to know your welding and machining symbols. Because I promise you, they are going to ask you either one of them. So you need to make sure you go through them. You can get it in your workbook, usually at the beginning chapter, where it explains to you exactly what every part means of that symbol. Then, this is a bonus for marks. They tend, but it's not to say, but they tend to ask you to draw the projection symbol for third orthographic projection. When they ask you to do this, all that you do is you go to the last page 
of the mechanical assembly and you will get it there. That is a bonus mark for you. You take that, you copy that and you apply it into your answer here wherever you need to draw it. But just read carefully if they state that you need to do it freehand because if you need to do it freehand, you will need to do it by hand. But if it doesn't state freehand, you will need to do it by your instruments. So that is a bonus mark here if they ask you to draw the projection symbol. Obviously, they are going to ask you to draw some sort of conventional drawing. So that is my third tip. Go through the conventional drawings of mechanical parts. Here are some conventional drawings that you can study. They will give you this on the left, the drawings on the left. And then you need to draw it in its most simple form, which are the drawings here on the right. So you can work through this to make sure that you are able to draw every mechanical part that they can ask you in a conventional drawing. Now, the first few questions from, let's say, 1 to 7 is going to be very basic questions. And it's going to be applied according to whatever is given here. You will need to go find the answers. But it is not to say that all the answers is going to be here. Some of the questions are about prior knowledge and understanding of what actually is going on here. So you need to be able to read the given information here. Like for this instance, if you look at this retaining spring here, you need to understand that that spring resting or original position is over here. Okay, and this applies to understanding of what is given to you and if you can read the drawing. So like I've stated, not everything here is going to be as clear as just stating it there. You will need to think about a few things. You will also need to calculate some dimensions. So they're going to ask you to calculate a given dimension. And I want to give you a tip here as well. When you give a calculation or dimension, and it's going to be a radius, let's say they've asked for a radius, you will need to say radius whatever, because the radius counts a half mark. If it is a diameter, you will need to give the symbol of diameter to get the full mark. So just be aware of that. If you don't give the diameter and the radius symbol, you will not get the full marks there. Then you don't need to write out millimeters because we know everything in each D given is in millimeters. We don't write millimeters. If they refer to a nut, you will need to say M something. So just be aware of that. Then you need to know your views. They are going to ask you, what is this view called and what is that view called? We know that this is in third orthographic projection. So you need to know that the right view is going to be on the right, the left view is going to be on the left, and the top view will be at the top. So they will specify to you what is what view, and then they'll ask you a question according to that view. So just make sure that you know how to implement that. Then question two is going to be split between a mechanism and a cam. They've been asking this question like this for a few years now. So we're going to break them into two parts. We're going to first focus on the mechanism. What I can give you at the mechanism, it is always good practice to refer back to the assessment criteria to make sure that you adhere to what is given and what they have asked you. So if you look at the page, you're going to get the given information, the given drawing. You're going to get the questions information given and specifications and some instructions. You are typically and usually going to draw this on a scale of one to one. Now, I want to encourage you, if you do not know what to do here, just draw the given. You can see that the given counts six marks and the given is very basic to do. You're going to take this and you're going to draw it here on a scale of one to one. You will usually get a starting point that you can see here, like this, like a starting point, like an O. And you will have the starting point here. And you will apply the given information on the piece of paper. When it comes to mechanisms, you will need to divide the circles into 12 parts. 
Like any circle in EGD, what we do is we divide it into 12 parts. And you can see that they've stated that that position over there is A. So that would also be A. Make sure that you do label everything that they gave you here. That will be A. Then this will be A. 1, A2, A3, A4, and so forth. Now mechanisms is only about understanding what you are reading. You need to apply what you read in the drawing. It's like a word problem. You are going to get things that's going to slide in a bar. You're going to get fixed points. You're going to get hinges. It is difficult to say what you're going to get. But if you don't know what to do, just draw the given like this and you will get a few marks like you can see over here. Also take note, if they give this as a chain line, you draw it as a chain line. Center lines, you draw as center lines. And these solid lines, you draw as solid lines and you give the labels. You don't need to give dimensions here. So you don't need to say dimension and dimensions. You just draw the given information. Go through this. Okay, take your time. Make sure that you do understand what you are reading so that you can apply the motion into the drawing then the cam which is down here go look at the assessment criteria make sure that you understand what you need to do you're going to get the given information you're going to get the motion and you're going to get the instructions over here there's some important information in the instruction regarding the displacements graph scale and there's also going to be information about the direction so make sure that you go through that and that you highlight everything that is important. So let's say we have a clockwise motion. Then you are going to number anti-clockwise. So this is the first rule. Whatever motion they give, you're going to do the opposite. So if they say it is clockwise, you are going to number anti-clockwise. If they say anti-clockwise, you are going to number clockwise. Then you will need to divide the shaft into 12 parts. You'll do this by using your 30, 60 degree triangles. Now, they can either ask you to do a graph or they can ask you to complete a gap. It is up to the examiner to determine whatever they want you to do, but you need to prepare to either draw a gap or you will need to draw a graph. Just remember that when you get a wedge follower, that the point of the wedge is in line with the bottom of the graph. Although the wedge is here, you still use your compass to project it to the vertical line. So that bottom of the graph is still in line with the point of the wedge. When it comes to a roller follower, the middle point of that roller is in line with the bottom of the graph. Okay, so you need to know this, that the point of the wedge is in line with the bottom of the graph and the middle point of a roller follower is in line with the bottom of the graph. It can be that the graph surpasses that line and comes back to the starting position. Okay, so just be aware of that as well. You should always give the arrow after the direction and you must always hatch the shaft. Okay, these are two bonus marks. Even if you do not know how the motion goes, just make sure that you do that to get two marks there. Then you need to know the three motions. The first motion is your uniform motion. This motion means straight lines. So there's nothing difficult about this. You are just going to construct straight lines according to the motion given in the question and then you're going to apply straight lines to the measurements that they give either it's going to dwell if it stays in this motion it dwells when it rises we draw a line up and when it falls we draw a line down always make sure that you write the displacement graph and the scale at the bottom of your graph to get the bonus marks the second motion is a simple harmonic motion you construct this motion by using a half circle that you divide in six parts over a course of six 
divisions then you just linking up the divisions with the circle you're going to construct a 30 and 60 degree to divide the circle or half circle into six parts there's your first second third fourth fifth and sixth part you will then line up these contact points with the six divisions which are vertically to get the points where they meet in the common plane the vertical and the horizontal line you can see we've started here with zero zero to the right there's the mark 32 30 over there there's the mark 60 to 60 there's our mark 90 to 90 which is here there's our mark 120 to 120 there's our mark on 150 to 150 and then lastly 180 to 180 it is not to say it is going to be from 100 to 180 the contact points you can connect nice in freehand if you are able to do it nice and proper in freehand otherwise you'll use a french curve to draw through the contact points to make a nice arc the last motion is a uniform acceleration and retardation this is where you will divide a vertical height into six parts over a course of six placements you will have the starting point here the acceleration and then the retardation at the end in the middle between the degrees which they've asked for this instance between 0 and 180 which is 90 you're going to divide that line into six parts vertically sometimes you will need to do a line division if you divide your line into six parts and you do not get a full number but rather you get 5,333 then you will need to do a line division if you divide the height and you get a clean number you can just tick off with your compass or a ruler then you're going to take from the starting point one to the first division one to the second division and one to the third division you're going to do the same at the end one to the first division one to the second and one to the third then you will see the contact points the first one makes contact with the first line which is 30 and 30 the second one makes contact with 60 because it's the second division 60 and the third one will make contact with the third one which is 90 we do the same here then this line makes contact with that line so there's the point there's your second point at the end and there's your last point at the end you will then once again use a french curve to connect the dots or you can do it by hand if you are able to do it neatly always make sure the title of the displacement graph with the scale to get the full marks at the displacement graph that is it for part one of your exam guide for paper two please subscribe and turn on the notifications to make sure that you never miss a lesson and also to get the notification when I release part 2. So please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.